Hi there, Chris Kellett here with 123 News, and I'm here to show you the update to what used to be called LR Deck, which is now called Instant Massive Gallery or IMG. Um, so you get the the IMG, the acronym there from the HTML tag for images. So we wanted to uh, make it nice and simple and uh, to show you that this is a new version. So in this new version, we have some really great new features. So now um, the IMG gallery is now fully responsive and works very well with fixed width layout, so with breakpoints. So as you move it down um, to the different device sizes, the gallery will automatically scale and resize, and that works very, very nicely indeed. I'll show you that in a minute. And we have added a lot of new controls as well. So there's 80 plus controls, and you can see here that we have um, uh, updated the label and description tools. We've got a new hover effects controller. We've got a new standard, or um, you can also use a different light box, a fancy box, light box. And we've also got uh, breakpoint controls and now pagination dots. So if you don't want to use numbers, you can have just dots there instead. So there's lots of features. We've also made some updates to the pagination manager that handles the um, pagination if you're wanting to use uh, multiple pages. And we've made a couple of tweaks as well on the icon manager, mainly just code tweaks, but they're there as well. So this is well worth upgrading. And of course, if you've already purchased this widget, you can get the upgrade for free. Let's take a look at the widget in action. So we've already seen, um, if you've got LR deck, you've used it before, but now in IMG, we have this the ability to create these nice new hover effects. And if we click on a gallery here, we have the uh, the pop-up light box here, and um, we can uh, we can have multiple images. We can have massive galleries. That's where we changed its name to Instant Massive Gallery. With the power of Flickr powering all the um, image resources behind, then now you can have these huge galleries. Let's take a look at this uh, being responsive. So if I scale the page down here, you'll see that everything scales nicely. And uh, if we go back to our gallery here, we have um, a really nice mobile layout. Or if we stretch it out, let's go out to, let's say, uh, an iPad, you can see that everything scales nicely. So the widget is now fully responsive. So that's great. But let's go and take a look at it in Muse. So I'm just going to close this down and I'm going to open up this tester page. Go into my library and we're now looking for IMG. So we've got that. I have got that, here we go, Instant Massive Gallery. We've got the IMG Gallery, we've got the IMG Icons Manager, and the IMG Pagination Manager. Now, you don't need to load those onto the page if you're not going to be changing the icons and you're just using um, the ones that are built in, or if you're not using pagination, you don't need those. So let's just drag the gallery in place. And let's pop it at the top of the page here. And you'll see that that's why it's called Instant Massive Galleries, because the gallery renders to the page. Now, the pre previous version, LR Deck, didn't actually render the gallery to the page until you published, but now it renders on the page so you can actually see it in action. We have up here our unit ID, and the reason why we use that is we, if we add on, let's say, these two widgets here, Pagination Manager and the Icons Manager, you can see that these are looking for a um, deck ID. So they're looking for what is the ID that we want to connect these controls to. So there's the ID there. It'll be different on yours because obviously Muse generates that ID in real time as you place it onto the page. So this one will be, we'd put U675 in there. And likewise, in the pagination manager, we would put the same in there. So that's why that unit, that uh, little um piece of code is showing up at the top there and you'll notice it says that hidden on publish so when you actually publish this site that won't actually show and this white line above it here is just a um, something is a, it's a rendering thing with uh, with Muse but that also disappears on preview so let's dive into the controls now so if I just bring this over a bit here we go you'll see here that in our setup now we have the hide ID 
block in preview so we can actually switch that off while we're previewing um, if we want to just uh, see it as it would be without that if that's um, hindering. We've got auto hide breadcrumbs, use lazy load so if you've got lots of images if you switch lazy load on then that will um, load the the images as you scroll down the page. You can use the photo set if you want to use a specific photo set or album. We can switch on the pagination dots, we can hide the photo icons and we can show a full size button. Now that if we switch off the ID block and we have a show full size button here then what will happen is we get this full size button here. When somebody loads up the page that will show and if they click that it will actually open the gallery up um, in the full screen so that's very useful if you're a photographer and you're building a, a photography site. You've got the themes as before but now we've also got a viewer type and you'll notice that quite a few of these options are greyed out that's because they don't actually activate until you choose that option so for instance if we chose use pagination dots you'll see that our pagination dots uh, options lights up and we can then use it we've done that to make it simpler so that there's not you, you know that if you don't have act um, if the particular panel is not active then you've not switched that function on so with our light box we can choose a standard or fancy box um, which is a different kind of light box that works well. We have our accent color, our icon color, so we can change the color of our icons from the widget and the navbar padding, so how much padding do we want around these. So that's uh, lots of customization options there. We have the label and description. Now we have lots of controls for label and description, so we can display the label. We can use a background color in the label. This is when you hover over it and the uh, units pop up. We can choose where we want the um, the label to show do we want it in the center do we want it to show the top or at the bottom of the image we can change the label padding the text size the um, the image count we can change the the text that shows uh, we can just display the photo count and we can also change the label background colors so there's lots of options in there now the hover effects which is in beta the the reason being is that we've created a couple of hover effects there's we could create many more but we've created these to um, these are all standard so these are pre-done um, but we're going to be adding more of those soon you can change the hover duration um, so how long uh, does it take for to, for the hover effect to actually happen how long does it take for it to go back and if there's a delay in between then we have a gallery source so this is it where you put your Flickr ID and if you're using photo sets those would so if we switched on use photo set you'll see that the photo set ID shows up there and likewise if we're using albums the album list would show up so if you haven't ticked those in the setup then those won't be available but you can change them whenever you like you can change the way that the albums are sorted so you can choose them reversed random by title ascending descending um, and and you can do the same with the images, so albums and images. Now the thumbnail images, if we take a look at there, um, this is where we would, it, it, we've put this new little thing to help you in here with your pagination. So it says to use the pagination, switch off auto height and width and set the pagination after the number of lines. So in this particular one, when we have, um, if we actually do that now, so we'll, change, we'll switch that off and we'll set the pagination to be after, let's say, two lines. So now what will happen is we get our next and previous, and that is of course when we would switch, um, we would pull in our pagination widget. However, we could, if we wanted to, switch on our used use pagination dots instead. And now we get these nice little pagination dots. That also means now that because we've chosen to use pagination dots, we also have our pagination dots menu active so we can then control exactly how these dots are going to display. So that's a whole new feature and it adds a whole new um, way of using LR deck. What else have we got? Well, if we want to if we choose the standard light box, we now have a ton of new controls. So in the standard light box we can now chose um, where we want uh, where we want the actual toolbar which so when you open the light box there's a toolbar for play or pause or next um, next um, image and you can control that there you can choose between two different animation types we can choose the either a standard menu 
that shows up of, of all the different icons, a basic menu that just has a few, or we can choose a custom menu. When you choose the custom menu, you have the choice to switch on and off all the different icons that show in that menu when somebody clicks on an image set. So there's a lot more control. We can choose the background color, the border width, the border color, um, the next and previous item size. So there's a ton of new additional features to give you as much flexibility in your design as possible. Now if we chose to, if we go back to our setup, and if we chose the Fancy box instead, because Fancy box is controlled by its own CSS. The only things that we have here are the ability to change the um, f the transition type from either fade or elastic. So that's quite a simple choice. But it, it's in beta at the moment, so we're hoping to be able to add some more light Fancy box features. But if you want the most flexibility, then just use the standard light box. But we wanted to put that in there as well. We also have breakpoints. Now, because the new um, IMG, the Instant Massive Gallery, is responsive, it works best if you use it with breakpoints. So you want your content underneath the um, gallery to move to exactly where you want it to as you resize the browser. So the best way to do that is with breakpoints. So if you use, um, if you set up your page and you go to your, let's go to our page, go to our page properties, you'll see that you can have either fluid width or fixed width, um, but you can use breakpoints with it. So you would use your breakpoints, and what we've done here, if we open that up again, you'll see that we have a standard set of breakpoints. Now, unless you are um, really fussy about your breakpoints, then these will be these will be perfect for pretty much any site. So you have four. You've got the smallest, which is for mobile. Um, so anything from 0 to 480, then 480 to 992, so that'd be a medium. Then you've got your large, so 992 to 1200, and then your extra large for big screens, 1200 to 1800. So those should be pretty much cover every, uh, everybody's sites, but if you want to change those, you can. So that's a whirlwind tour of the new um, IMG, the Instant Massive Gallery, and we hope you enjoy using it. We've um, enjoyed making the updates. Quite a bit of work has gone into making all of these new updates, and we are very happy with the results. So go ahead and start using it today, and thanks for watching.